Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Noah. It's nice to meet you if I haven't got a chance to yet. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the New Age religion, of which I was formerly a member of the New Age religion. And in this video, if you are a New Ager, I would encourage you to listen to the video in its entirety uh, with an open heart and an open he ear to the things that I am going to ask you guys. I'm going to ask you some things to consider in this video, of which I wish I would have considered earlier when I was in the New Age religion, because there was many ideals and philosophies of the New Age religion that I just blatantly accepted without uh, having a sit down and, and critically thinking about uh, the certain doctrines of the New Age religion that I was accepting and where they were leading me. So I'm going to be going through some points um, and just different things for you guys to consider because your eternity does lie upon the decisions that you make in this life and um, it's very important. And uh, I will also be talking about uh, my experience of coming out of the new age and coming to uh, Jesus Christ and how he saved me and how he is not just some guru, uh, how he is not just some consciousness of not how he is not just some prophet, but he is the son of God and uh, he can set you free. But anyways, uh, I'll be getting into these things now. So I'm not attacking any new ager personally. I do love you guys and I can very much relate where you are coming from because I had the exact same worldview uh, as you in my former life. Okay, so we're going to be uh, going through it now. The first question that I wanted to ask you guys is what um, benefits do the new age practices actually bring to your life? What tangible fruit? do does meditation astral projection all of these new age practices what has it actually brought to your character where where you can see wow i am way more compassionate towards people that i don't know or wow now i am a lot more uh well-rounded as as a person in my speech or Wow, now you, you get what I'm trying to say? Uh, when I was in the New Age religion, I had the deception of thinking that I was becoming a more loving person, that I was being becoming humble, but there wasn't actually any tangible fruit, and it was just an idea that I had in my head. And what do these practices actually bring to benefit of society? You know, there's tons of different New Age practices, um, and I'm not going to go through every single one, but whatever it may be for you, you have to actually sit down and consider, is this something that is just selfish and that is uh, self-serving and, and pleasing to my own flesh? Or is this actually bringing a benefit to people's eternity? Is this actually leading people to the truth? Or is it just letting them have a good experience? Is it leading them to uh, having better self-pleasure, to having a, a better time? Or is that is is do these things actually um, are they actually profitable to your life? Are these practices and philosophies? And also uh, a very important thing to consider is since you've adopted these new age uh, philosophies, um, what questions, what life questions has this actually brought to you where you can come to a concrete answer upon things? Such as, where am I going to spend my after uh, afterlife for sure? Um, you know, uh, do all religions lead to heaven? Is there such a thing as a heaven? Why am I on this earth? Was I created? And all of these important life questions, when I was going through the New Age, it was as though I was just going down a rabbit hole of information that never led me to solid concrete answers about these very important life questions. And it just led to more confusion and more muddying of the waters and more blurring of the lines on these questions as everything just kind of uh, seemed to synchronize in a, in a sense with all of these questions. And I thought I was achieving Godhood, but I didn't actually even know what that meant. It was in reality me just getting more prideful, getting more full of my ego and whatnot. And um, in reality, there was nothing that, where I was like, all right, this divine nature in me is now somehow going to ascend me to Godhood. It was just my pride inside of my mind of the ideal of who I was, was elevating, but I was in reality becoming more depraved. I was actually becoming more prideful and more arrogant, 
more selfish, more lustful, and uh, I wasn't actually becoming more loving. I wasn't becoming a god and whatnot, and uh, and I was deceived. And that's a that leads me into my next question: is how do you think that you can have understanding of all of the spirit realm? And that none of these spirit beings, which are fallen angels, which are deceiving you, and many of them live in your flesh. I want to tell you that uh, right now. When I came out of the New Age um, and I started getting deliverance, I realized that um, I got a lot of uh, demonic spirits inside of my flesh from the New Age practices. And uh, these spirits will try to deceive you. What makes you think that you have the wisdom in that of its in yourself to be able to know that these spirit guides, which are fallen angels, which want to live in your flesh and, and fulfill lusts and desires through you, what makes you think that you couldn't possibly be deceived by these beings? What makes you think that you know for sure that these beings are what they say they are? And are these beings actually leading you to do things that are loving, that are sacrificial for your neighbor, that are showing love unto your neighbor, or are these beings just using you as a tool for their own desires? Now, you might say the same thing about, oh, well, your God just uses you for a tool for his own desires. And that that's not the correct perspective. He does use us to do his will. The Most High God, the God of Jesus Christ and, and Jesus, uh, does use us to do his will. But it's not in this selfish lustful manner it's a synergistic relationship where there's actually fulfillment with god and uh and with me and it's not these beings just compelling me to do evil deceiving me into certain doctrines but uh, jesus makes it plainly to me his will and he's manifested himself unto me and he has clearly revealed himself to me god has clearly revealed himself to me in his word his character his nature his desire his will and uh, all of these things but these random spirits that you can't even see that you how can you have affirmation that you can trust these spirits, especially when they're way more powerful than you, they're way more wise than you in a sense, and um, they've been around a lot longer than you. And also, why don't these spirits uh, plainly? Why do? Why don't these spirits plainly reveal themselves unto all individuals? If they are actually so loving to humanity, if they really want to better your life. Why does their knowledge seem esoteric of uh, that it has to be hidden? Now, once again, you might say the same thing about God. Well, his knowledge is esoteric and very few people actually know about him. But this is not the case. God wants to show his, his knowledge unto all men. He's willing that none should perish, but that all should be saved. And... Um, and uh, the Bible says in James chapter 1 that God will give wisdom unto, unto all men who seek for it and uh, wisdom according to his actual wisdom and, and not spirit guides and whatnot. Um, but uh, why does it seem like you have to give like a, a, a covenant and open up these beings that you have to willfully open yourself up to the spirit realm, whether it be through meditation, astral projection or, uh, you know, certain mind bending things or tarot cards, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, how can you trust in these beings? What makes you think that these beings also don't live inside of your flesh? Do you think they are just constantly flying around your ear telling you specific things? Or what's that internal drive that is within your flesh that is leading you, that is compelling you to do things that are lustful? And it's never, like I said, it's, it never is things that are, that are actually beneficial uh, to humanity. It's never sacrificial love, but it's always upon the lustful desires of your flesh or the lustful desires of these spirits. And uh, do, these, do these demons really bring peace to your conscience? Or are they just bidding you to do to do their will? Do have they actually shown love unto you? Like uh, God gives me His presence, He shows me His love. I'm able to worship Him in spirit and in truth. But with these spirits, they they feel unclean. They just want you to do lustful things, and they're not actually leading you to a peaceful life with God, whatever that may be to you. Now, obviously, the Christian view, the real view, the truth is that there's one most high God, and it's not just the universe, and uh, we'll be getting more into that later. But I would encourage you guys to continue to, to lead to that point as well, too. And uh, why do you think you can turn all 
religious figures into ascended masters as well is another important question. All of the Gnostic Gospels, if you want to look at the Gnostic Gospels or Gospels, they were all written after all of the New Testament and whatnot, and there is no solid concrete evidence that Jesus was just some hippie that was a Hindu practitioner or he was into New Age consciousness. He, you know, he, it's evident that he is the son of God, that he claimed to be the son of God, that prophecies were actually fulfilled. He actually fulfilled 300 Old Testament prophecies that validate that he was not just some new age guru, that he was not just some good teacher, but he was actually the son of God manifested in the flesh. And no other of these ascended masters line up to um, how distinct Jesus Christ is. You know, like for an example, Buddha, he didn't even claim divinity. He didn't even claim divine inspiration. He just started making things up one day, and he even apostatized from his own religion towards the end of his life. I believe it was towards the end of his life, or I think so. Um, but um, Anyways, Jesus is, is so distinct and set apart from all of these uh, other New Age and Ascended Masters that you would call spirit guides. You know, he's the only one who's the Son of God. He's the only one who shed his blood. He loved you to die for you so that you could have the forgiveness of God, so that you could be born again. He gave his life for you. He's coming back again. You know, he's he's got so much more wisdom. If you actually sit down and look at his teachings... His wisdom is actually concrete. His wisdom can actually lead you to real concrete truth as opposed to all of these other new age teachings will just lead you into deeper confusion. And like I said, you won't come to concrete answers on things. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15, and, marvel for, uh, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel life. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So what the Bible is saying right here is that there's a high probability of being deceived by Satan. Satan is the god of this world, and he has a majority of people uh, being deceived. What makes you think that in that of itself that you can just find the truth without actually going to God, without actually going to Jesus, that you are just so wise that you know what the truth is uh, no matter what, without actual confirmation from somebody like Jesus Christ who actually manifested himself, who actually fulfilled prophecies, who actually worked uh, miracles and signs and wonders and whatnot that validated himself. And there's historical evidence. Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is the greatest historic event of its time. Don't listen to anybody else. Even atheistic scholars all across the world admit that Jesus Christ uh, lived. And there is so much... Uh, there's even there's even testimonies of non-Christian um, sites uh, around the time of Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection, and the the church following after the church that sprang out of out of Jesus. Um, that's an interesting way to put it, but. Um, there is actually sites outside of that church that uh, validated that Jesus Christ was uh, more than just a man and that he was actually um, worshipped, that he was not just some some deity and whatnot. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is, uh, let's see here. Where is the security in your view of the afterlife? I realize, and I, I myself uh, si sort of adopted the ideal of reincarnation. But once again, what makes you think that you have the power to be able to ascend yourself to nirvana? When you die, especially being out of this flesh body and not having security in that, where does your trust come from that you are just going to somehow be able to elevate yourself to uh, the, the 10th layer of consciousness or whatever it may be called? I'm not completely familiar with all of the lingo and the terms and, and whatnot anymore, uh, but you get what I'm trying to say. What makes you think that you and yourself can ascend yourself into 
uh, into the heavens and whatnot. And that's the same thing that Satan said. He said, I will ascend myself uh, into the heavens. I will ascend myself above the most high and whatnot. And he got casted out of heaven because of pride. And that's exactly what the devil and, and demons that are living in your flesh that are, are deceiving you are trying to fill you up with pride to make you think that in that of itself that you uh, can do these things. How can you have affirmation in a reincarnation? Um, and what makes you think, once again, that you can trust these spirit guides that somehow they're going to guide you, they're going to assist you into the astral realm, or not into the astral realm, but uh, above, up out of this so-called matrix that New Agers uh, would talk about. And uh, what makes you think you're not going to have to stand before God Almighty and give an account for your life? You know, we've been given a conscience. When you do things that are against your conscience, which approves you when you write, do right and disproves you when you do wrong, um, what makes you think that you are going to just somehow escape that conscience and, uh, and whatnot, that you're not going to have to give an account for your life, that you could just give a reckless life? You obviously realize that you don't have an atheistic perspective, so you realize that there was, uh, uh, in some way or another, I don't know necessarily how every New Ager's view is, uh, but that God created this world, or that this world is God in a sense, and, uh, and you have a conscience built into you from God, however you may look at it at this current point. You do have that conscience. And how do you think that since God gave you a conscience that you are just go somehow going to escape that in the afterlife? And uh, don't think that you can just... Oh, well, I'll just pay it off. I, I'm a pretty good person and whatnot. That's not how it works. Uh, the next point I already kind of talked about is ego shedding. Um, this is more of a testimony for me. Like uh, I thought that I was... I was getting way more humble. I remember at one point I told my ex-girlfriend about that I was shedding my ego, that I was becoming more humble. I said something to that effect. And she pretty much laughed in my face because she realized she didn't even know that I had demons, but she realized that I was being loaded up with the spirit of pride in a sense. And uh, that I was just I was completely deceived. I thought I had all of this spiritual power. I thought I had all of this wisdom, but all I was really doing was smoking weed, listening to new age music and whatnot. And I wasn't actually gaining substantial wisdom. I wasn't actually gaining these concrete answers and whatnot. And um, I was really just living for myself. I was living for for wickedness. So are you growing in love or are you are you truly becoming more selfless or are you just continuing in diverse pleasures to satisfy yourself? And um, and another thing that I wanted to say that I feel like God is leading me to say right now that even though you might view yourself as becoming more loving, that is not going to negate you from the bad things that you have done in your life. The Bible says if we offend at one point in the law of God that's instilled in your conscience, we offend at all, meaning that you are a criminal in the eyes of God, even for um, breaking one part of his law. If you have ever hated somebody unjustly, you know, you are a criminal in God's eyes. Just because you feel like you're becoming more selfless right now for uh, people around you and whatnot does not mean that you are going to escape the penalty of your sin. The next point that I wanted to talk about, which is very peculiar, is why is there such a spinoff of Christianity and the vehement agenda to degrade Jesus, to blaspheme Jesus? There's countless videos on the internet to degrade Jesus to just an ascended master way above every everybody else. If you type in on YouTube, Jesus, ascended master, there'll be tons of, of new age videos about Jesus just being an ascended master. But if you type one in about like Muhammad or if you type one in, in about Gandhi, it's going to be way less in comparison. And I remember I used to listen to new age music, uh, the underachievers and flatbush zombies. And uh, I didn't recognize it at the time. I sort of did. 
But literally in every, pretty much every single video they ever make, all of the lyrics are a spinoff of Christianity. They are trying to say, oh, we're messiahs, we're prophets, we're like the most high. And uh, they have their own version of being born again and whatnot. Even Christ Consciousness, there's this particular um, New Age rapper who has a video called Christ Consciousness. Even that's that's a spinoff of Christianity. Once again, the the New Agers, the doctrine of the New Agers, which in reality are Satanists, and and we'll be getting into that. The top head level people of your religion are hardcore Satanists, or the people that formed your religion are actually devout Satanists who worship Satan. And Satan is not just some metaphor. He's not just some ideology, but he's a literal being that fell from heaven, and him and his agents are trying to destroy receive you to bid his will and to to lead you to hellfire to everlasting hellfire jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven and when he died and rose again he proved his teachings on the afterlife that um that they're right you know and he said hell is a place where the worm dies not and the fire isn't quenched they'll be destroyed with everlasting destruction from the presence of the lord so uh, you're going to spend eternity in, in one of two places. You're not going to just fly up into the spirit realm when you die somewhere and just start creating things. That's most definitely not the case. What makes you think that you have the divine nature in yourself to be able, or just the power in general, uh, to be able to do so? There's no, there's no amount of uh, demonic knowledge that could lead you to 100% affirmation in that because it's simply not the case. So once again, going back to why is there such this hardcore push against Jesus? Why are, like I said about the Christ consciousness and whatnot, Jesus is not a consciousness. He's actually coming back. He's having uh, an actual second coming back where he is going to tor torch this entire place and, and, and burn it in fire. And uh, there's going to be the judgment of God. And uh, Jesus is going to come back and not just as some consciousness, but he's going to come back with eyes of a flame of fire, with a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth, and he's going to make war with the nations, and he, the wrath of the Lamb is going to come upon this earth. So you need to repent and flee the wrath to come, because um, the, the wrath of God is going to be outpoured, and you need the forgiveness, you need the mercy and the love of Christ. But you, if you continue on in your rebellion, and your New Age doctrine and philosophy that is completely uh, contrary to the real Jesus Christ, then you are going to be, be deceived. Uh, by demons and you're going to be dragged to hell and have to suffer the wrath of God. Okay, um, and a very important thing, start seeking out Jesus for yourself personally, the real Jesus, the, the Jesus of the Bible, the Son of God. If you start actually seeking him out and wanting to find him, you will quickly realize now you have to actually be doing it from a pure heart where you want to follow and serve him. But you will quit. You can't just do this as a science experiment, but you will quickly realize that uh, these spirit guides, which are demons, will not be your friends anymore. There and there already is. There's this strong urge within you that is binding you from wanting to actually seek out the Jesus of the Bible. The demons don't mind if you seek out Buddha. The demons don't mind if you seek out Muhammad and all of these uh, other ascended masters and whatnot. But if you start seeking out the Jesus of the Bible and praying to him, there is going to be this strong urge within your flesh not to do so. And, um, these beings are not going to be your friends anymore. You start seeking him out and give your life to him. You go back and try to talk to these spirit guides and they will no longer be your friends. You have committed mutiny against them and they will start an out, an all out war against you to try to drag your soul, to try to deceive you and derail you from coming to Christ. Why would these spirit guides not want you to find the real Jesus Christ? Why would they want to uh, why wouldn't they want you to is, is the real question. It's because um, they are the enemy of Jesus. And if you are serving the enemy of Jesus, you're not his friend and uh, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, uh, point number six. Oh, I guess it's not really point number six, but the next thing that I wanted to talk about is that uh, your views on, on God are, are, uh, are Gnostic and uh, they come from satanic doctrines. 
um, I wanted to play this video actually really quick and um, it's very informative and I hope that it will open your guys' eyes up a little bit more to some of the dualistic and, and Gnostic doctrines that are within your religion. So I'm going to play that video now. First, I'd point out something that basically immediately invalidated this whole thing for me, and that's flawed logic when it comes to selecting opposites that supposedly need to be synthesized. Many of them aren't even opposites at all when you think about it, so let me show you what I mean by looking at a few. And so first, darkness and light, which is also to speak of night and day. The problem is that the darkness of night, or any kind of darkness really, is actually what's called a privation. It's a privation of light, meaning it's not a thing in and of itself, it's a lack of light. Darkness is not a physical entity like light is. Light consists of particles. Darkness has no components though. It can't be examined scientifically in any way because it's a privation. So to say the two need to be synthesized is an utter misunderstanding of the nature of darkness. You can't synthesize light and nothing thing, you would still just have light by itself completely unmixed. And this can be pictured well with the yin-yang symbol. You have the light and the dark side. Well, if that symbol was based in reality, all you'd have is the light half hanging in midair, and you wouldn't be able to differentiate between the background and the dark half because, again, darkness is merely a lack of light, not a solid color in and of itself. So technically, the dark side would just be see-through and non-existent, really. And this is the problem with many of these supposed opposites. For example, life and death, like we saw in the Ouroboros. The Ouroboros represents how life is sustained through death, while in point of fact, life is only sustained by life. You don't get life from non-life. And this just shows how elementary these doctrines are. I mean, it's just like that Bible verse, claiming to be wise, they became fools. I mean, these supposed like Freemasonic and Gnostic geniuses throughout the years, this is all they could come up with? Just these flawed, error-filled ideas like these? I mean, it's clear they haven't really thought this through in a real way because what's actually happening in the process of this supposed circle of life is that an animal eats another animal, which when it eats the animal, that animal's body is still living in a sense and it has millions and millions of living components in it still. So when it eats it, its own body consumes the energy from those living biological components, which then produces energy for its own cells. So actually, life is being sustained by life, not death. And again, death is also a privation. It's a privation of life. It's not an opposite state of being from life. It's the absence of life. Being dead just means you're not alive. And personally, I think this also touches the realm of morals in the form of good and evil. I would argue that evil is also a privation, a privation of good, like light and dark and life and death. The reason I say this is because in order to actually have any real objective morals at all, you need to have a transcendent standard by which to judge what is good and what is evil. If you don't have that, you don't have real morals. You can have an opinion about morals, so like what's right and what's wrong, but it's really the same as saying, I think the color blue is better than the color red. But who's to say which is actually better though? Our opinions are not actually grounded in the truth of reality, unless reality has some confirming standard for us to base our opinions off of. So if you want morals that aren't subjective like that, you have to have a real moral standard by which to judge what is good and what is bad. But then I would argue that we do have that standard in the perfect person of God. God is how you know what's good and what's bad. If something aligns with his character, it's good because God is perfectly good and thus he's the perfect standard by which to judge what is good. And if God is a perfect standard of what is good, then he's also a perfect standard by which to judge what is evil, because whatever quality is not found in his perfect character is what you would deem to be evil. But then that makes evil just another privation, because God has no evil in him to speak of. We call evil whatever fails to meet up to the standard that is God's perfect person. And since God, the standard is only good, that makes evil merely a privation of the good inherent in the person of God from all eternity. So in layman's terms, evil is just a falling short of good. It's a lack of good in a person, or a lack of good in their actions that we refer to as evil. But then this means that the two can actually never be synthesized because the one is actually an absence of the other. You can't mix the two because if good became something else through mixture, there would be no evil because evil relies on there being good for its existence. In the same way darkness relies upon light for its existence. But another one that's actually one of their favorites is chaos and order, and chaos being a privation of order. It's actually the lack of a state 
of order. And so here again with this one, we don't actually have two opposites that need to be synthesized. We have one thing and then it's negation. That's what chaos is to order. It's negation. It's absence. And some of the other opposites that are often pointed to have different problems. For instance, water and fire. Water and fire don't seem to be objective opposites. They seem to be subjective. I mean, why these two? Why not fire and air or water and earth? I mean, all these just seem to be a personal opinion of what's opposite and not truly clear objective opposites so this so this source being uh this gnostic source being can't even be known it can't ever even be uh comprehended or anything of that nature according to occultists according to new agers and what kind of of god is that it sounds like a, a figment it doesn't sound like a real god and um, many, uh, like I was saying earlier, many of the founders of your religion were hardcore Satanists. Look into it, Anton LaVey and uh, some other people. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, uh, but she's the quote-unquote mother of the New Age. If you look, if you look that phrase up, look into her teachings, look into her doctrines and and her worship. She openly worships Satan as a being. She doesn't worship him as some consciousness or some metaphor, but she literally openly worships uh, Satan. So I, I would encourage you to look into the founders of your religion, look into the people who westernized it, and realize that they openly worshipped uh, Satan. And God is not some demigod. He does not have ill will towards human beings. He is not just a configuration of Satan and God at the same time. They are not all one together. They're completely contrary. The Bible says in the book of John, uh, in the book of First John, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is 100% light and uh, he is, he's not evil, right? He is the most high God and uh, he created this place so that we could have a relationship with him, that we could glorify him. Now, uh, that kind of leads me to my next point as well, that uh, you might think, well, um, I, I, I'm in the New Age religion now and I was... I didn't fit in with people normally. I didn't fit in with Christians, which you have to realize that many Christians are, most Christians, at least in developed countries that name the name of Christ, are not real Christians. But anyways, you might think, um, and I thought this was the case for me when I was uh, getting into the New Age religion, that, wow, I finally figured out why I was so set apart from everybody, why I never fit, uh, fit in with any friend groups while, while growing up and whatnot. And I thought that I found it in the New Age religion. I thought, wow, everything's finally clicked and whatnot. And I started to look down upon my peers and my, my peers and my schoolmates and everything of that nature. And I just thought of myself as so much better. I'm like, these idiots just don't know anything. They just know their simple little lives and they don't know anything of spiritual things. But in reality, I was actually set apart for God and, and the enemy was trying to deceive me into the new age religion. And you can actually find fulfillment in Jesus Christ that uh, you are looking for of why you're set apart. You know, you're set apart for God and many times people that are set apart for God, the enemy, the demons, the devil will try to uh, co coax that person in before they can get to their real calling in the Most High God and whatnot. And uh, you can find that fulfillment in Jesus Christ. Like I was saying, you might feel like, oh, man, I just didn't fit in with anybody. And uh, I've, I finally found it in the New Age. But I'm telling you, that's not where you want to find it as the New Age. Because it's just going to lead you down a path of destruction. It truly is. It's going to lead you into more pride and whatnot. And um, and uh, there was this doctrine that I, w that I have briefly heard of in the New Age religion. I don't remember the, the specific name of the doctrine. But it's pretty much that everything in your life has to be destroyed before you can really enter into Godhood. And it's this spinoff of actually being born again by God. And, um, and I was starting to lose everything in my life. I was losing my friends. I was losing my family. I, was, I, I wasn't going anywhere with school. I wasn't finding anything like that. And uh, I thought it was possibly because I was starting to uh, ascend into Godhood. But really, it was just the deception, guys. And the devil just wanted to destroy me. He was trying to kill me. He was trying to lead me to destruction. But God, He saved me. He made me born again. And um, he, He's the true one where you want to find, find real life. These demons, the, the devil is, is not creative, creative in that of, an, uh, of, of himself. 
He just spins off everything of God. So why would you want to live for a counterfeit? Why would you want to live in a deception where you just satisfy your lust for, satisfy your flesh for a number of years, for a number of decades, and then have to go to hell? And the meanwhile, you could have had the real thing. And the real thing is the Most High God. He is beautiful. He is holy. And he is way better. Jesus is way better than anything Satan could ever offer you. It might feel pleasing. It might feel lustful in the split second of while you're committing certain sins. But in reality, there's a way that seems right unto man, but leads to death. And that's most definitely in the case with the New Age religion, guys. So I plead with you to, to, to repent to Jesus. And that literally led me into my next point. That um, even though, you know, uh, you might have grown up with a, a weak view of Christianity and whatnot, and you look at Christians as, wow, they're just deceived with old religion, they just have the Bible and whatnot, that's most definitely not the case. And I, I do apologize for anybody who grew up in a, in a powerless church that didn't actually have real Christians in it. But you can find that intimacy. That spiritual excitement that you are looking for can be found in the Most High God. Now, it has to be done responsibly. It has to be done with wisdom that is actually pleasing to God. And this doesn't mean that you can just go around and astral project and, and do demonic things with demons in the spirit realm. But I literally feel a thousand times more spiritual now that I'm a Christian as opposed to being a New Ager. The, the New Age practices and, and spiritual power that I was engaging in as a new age you're looking back on it it just it, it, it feels so unclean it's not natural guys you shouldn't be the reason why it, it's it seems to bring some kind of fulfillment because you are looking for that spiritual fulfillment and you're finding it and we we are a spirit you know and we have us or we we, we are a soul, we have a spirit, and we have flesh, right? That most definitely is the case. So uh, if you're not having that spiritual connection with God, there's that disconnect. And people are trying to find it in the New Age religion. And there, there seems to be that kind of connect, but at the same time, it still feels unclean and whatnot. And that's because it is. But you can find the connect, and you can find the true fulfillment. And uh, Jesus says, the word that uh, you are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. And you can have that, that true... Uh, cleansing of your conscience. You can have peace with God in your conscience by the blood of Jesus Christ. So um, you don't have to continue in the counterfeit of, of the devil and um, and just getting high and whatnot. All right. So uh, that's pretty much what I got for the video, guys. Um, any of these practices right here, astral projection, spiritism, aut automatic writing, meditation, reincarnation, witchcraft, tarot cards, astrology, Yoga, Reiki, astral projection, mental projection, divination, uh, psychic practices, karma, Zen, chakra alignment, horoscope, nirvana, Gnosticism, spirit guides, uh, universalism. Um, guys, these are new age practices and they're a counterfeit of God. They're a spinoff of God. And many of these things are very angering to God. And they're storing up wrath for you on the judgment day. So you need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ if you repent and call upon the name of Jesus, and have true faith in Him, and repent of your sins. He can save you, no matter how deep you are into this religion, no matter how deep you are into this philosophy, God is, is a real person, and He wants to have a relationship with you. God is not just some universe and whatnot. We are not God. We are we're human beings, and we were created by Him, and you can tr find that true fulfillment in God. So turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have freedom. You can be born again, and you don't have to suffer the penalty of your sin. So God bless you guys. If anybody has any questions, you can contact me. I'll put my contact information in the description. And I love you guys, and bye.